Greetings, brothers and sisters. How are you doing? I'm Sister Cece. Thank you for joining me for Cece on Air, which is housed on PQLR1 Radio, where Yah is first. We like to play artists for you that have some wonderful music, edifying the Father, Yahuwah, as well as other sisters and brothers like our sister today, uh, Sister Yara. She has written a wonderful book called Remnant Love, Winning, Winning the End Days Battle. And this is something that we all need. So we want to um, thank you, sis, for joining us today. Shalom, shalom. Thank you for having me. Yeah, shalom. So the first question that we have for you, sis, before we even get going, we want to make sure that everyone knows where to reach out to you and also where to purchase this book that we'll be discussing today. Uh, well, the book is available on Amazon. It's called Remnant Love. And it's also at remnantlovebook.com. So you can find out more information about the book at remnantlovebook.com um, and purchase it from there also. And also you can find me on social media at Yara Aruka Shalom or at rootedandrisen.org. Okay, perfect. All right. So is, is this, well, no, we won't get into that, but we'll ask you this. And, and it's so fitting. How has the love of Yah changed your life? Oh, goodness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, how hasn't it? Um, mm -hmm. I mean, goodness. The most high, the, the thing about the most high is that he is so, um, the way that he loves us is so much different from what we experience in the world. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the most high, has his hand on this and pursues us, you know, mm -hmm. just relentlessly. Mm -hmm. And so I, I just thank the most side. He, he, he found me in my youth, mm -hmm. you know, he found me in my youth. And when I look back on it, you, you know, some things you don't see as you're growing up, but as I look back over mm -hmm. my life growing up, I just see that he, he just kind of swooped into my life and my youth when I had a lot of things that were going on that could have took me in a really wrong direction. Mm -hmm. You know, he came in and, and covered me and was a covering for me, you know, so so his love has changed because it, it it was there with me from the beginning and it walked with me through all of my all of my pitfalls, all of my <laughs> my sin, my my detours, you know, the times where I, where I uh, struggled to find him, struggled to find my way in him like he never left me, he never, mm -hmm. you know, forsook, forsook me in that, you know, mm -hmm. so just having that stability and knowing that that he is there and and you know that he's been in my life in a way that has changed me you know changed me from the inside out changed my mindset you know changed and and, and grew me up <laughs> right you know so just being there for me so his, his love is, is persistent and it's something that you have to continue to grow in it's something i'm continuing to embrace because in some ways i struggle to embrace it you know because you know how do you how do you you know receive that love you know it's easier when you're looking back on it in retrospect you know but when you're in the midst of your trial sometimes it's hard to it's hard to embrace it you know it's mm -hmm. hard to discern it so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's an ongoing journey mm -hmm. yes well praise y'all for that um and and the book is is about love so we will definitely continue to talk about love so um when we're talking about love what would you say the greatest misconception or perception of love is and why do most people why do most people think of love in that way like you talked about the father's love being different than the love that we think um wh what is the i guess what would be the the most prominent way that people think of love like some examples i think that most of the time when we think about love we think about we're just thinking about emotions. We're thinking about strong feelings, you know, because uh -huh. we say that we love everything, right. <laughs> anything that we like, anything. Yes. You know, I love ice cream. Uh -huh. you know, I love, you know, we, we say that we love somebody when we just met them, you know? So I think that we just, we feel a strong feeling that is positive and we label that as love, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that's, that's one of the biggest misconceptions that we have. We think that we, that we have love just because of that. But as soon as that gets tested, all, all those good feelings go out the window mm -hmm. <laughs> and yes. we realize well, maybe that re wasn't really love after all, you know, right. so, it you know, it makes us have to examine like what, what is love really? Right. And I, I would agree because when you look at our people as a whole, 
how many situations do we get into? I'm not even just talking mm -hmm. about male, female relationships. I'm talking mm -hmm. about females and females, males and males. You know, mm -hmm. you get into these relationships and they fall apart. You get into another one and it falls apart. And that is because we probably don't really know what love is. And we misappropriate that word so much that mm -hmm. when it isn't what we think it should be, we're ready to just burn the house down. Mm hmm Mm -hmm. yeah yeah love love is is really you know the most high um puts love within within boundaries any any the way that he loves us is through covenant mm -hmm. you know so he loves us through covenant so there's there's boundaries there's an agreement you know mm -hmm. so it, it's, it's something that's that's stable it's something that's that's unmoving mm -hmm. so you know, so we really have to look to the most high first to really get an understanding of, you know, what love is supposed to look like. So he has extended himself to us, you know, to show us what love is, you know, and, you know, if we don't look to him and we just look to the things, like you said, like in the world, you know, we, we see everything talking about his love, <laughs> right? you know, so if we look at that as being our standard, you know, relationships fall apart, you know, that, that called it called itself love, mm -hmm. you know, but love, um, with the most high if he, if you know one of the things that's hard for us to embrace the most high's love is because we think that it's gonna we don't think it's gonna last mm -hmm. you know so at least some of us don't you know don't trust it because we don't think it's gonna last because with people who we say that we love or say that loved us you know that has fallen to the wayside we can look mm -hmm. back at all kinds of broken relationships um you know that have gone to the wayside so i think that the the one of the greatest things about love when we look at the most high's perspective is the stability of it Mm -hmm. you know, the commitment that comes along with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think um, what you're describing concerning our people would be a, a love Stockholm syndrome because, um, mm -hmm. or or just, you know, or, or PTSD, not Stockholm syndrome, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. PTSD, a PTSD mm -hmm. love, you know, we are traumatized because yes. of the situations that we've been through. And although our father is our creator, he's our everything, Yes. Um, we tend to humanize him when he is so far from these folks that we've been dealing with on this earth, you know? Mm -hmm. And so when we look at things not going our way, we tend to throw a tantrum and say, oh, he must not love us, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and some of us would throw him away and just decide mm -hmm. to go over here to the crystals or to African spirituality right. or right. Egyptology or whatever else is going to uh, fit our fancy at the moment. Right. And the father is so gracious, even though we do these treacherous things, oftentimes he will call us back and still mm -hmm. love us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, that, and that's the, and that's the thing about love. So he, he's not moved by our <laughs> lack of it. <laughs> he's not moved by our roller coaster of emotions, by our, you know, frailties by our struggles. He's he's steadfast in his covenant. Right. You know, so he's he's committed to the covenant that he said. He said that I will love I will love you. I will I won't leave you. I won't forsake you. Mm -hmm. You know, once we, we come to him. So he does he's not emotional. You know, he's not gonna you know he's not up there saying, you know, one more time <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, and I'm gonna you know, he's not emotional. Mm -hmm. And our love is very emotional. You know, it's very um uh fragile. Mm -hmm. You know, so so it's it's so important that we look to him to be able to figure out what what is how do we how do we come into that love, mm -hmm. um, and and one of the things that I that I talk about in the book is is being able to first be established in in receiving love from the Most High, mm -hmm. you know that's that's the foundation before we can think about you know loving and being in relationships with other people, mm -hmm. and even you know the right way to really love ourselves because a lot of times we struggle with that as well, yes, yes. you know or knowing how to love the Most High. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to be able to first, you know, build a foundation of what does love look like and look at the most highest characteristics and 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 examine how does he love us, mm -hmm. you know, and really, really open our eyes to see it, mm -hmm. um, which is going to take some healing. Like you said, yes. is that love PTSD? We've been traumatized by mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. love and by and by religion and by, you know, oh. all of these things. So we have to be become restored and, and our eyes have to be purified to be able to see the most high through the lens of who he really is and then we have to be able to receive that love like we have to not just see it and know it you know because everybody will say you know well, well y'all loves <laughs> you know we say it but mm -hmm. do we really know it have we really received it 
right in our hearts in a way that that gives us safety mm -hmm. you know that gives us stability that mm -hmm. we can really trust it you know Mm -hmm. You know, because when there's no trust, even in regular human relationships, where there's no trust, there's really no relationship. You know, right. if, you, if you're not trusting the person that you're with, you're going to be unstable mm -hmm. in that relationship. You know, so mm -hmm. really become stable in 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 seeing and receiving the Most High's love. Right, right. And so I have one of the questions here. It said, um, "How can we, as a people, be expected to love when it is mm -hmm. clear that we haven't been shown?" appropriate examples of love from those around us that we would say are supposed to love us like how do mm -hmm. we even make ourselves a blank slate like you're talking about um mm -hmm. we we have to know how to love ourselves we have to know how to love the father and we know how to do those things that we could reach out to anyone else beyond that but how do mm -hmm. we really do that how do we make ourselves a blank slate so that we can learn to love yeah it it is it's a process, you know. It's really a surrendering, mm -hmm. you know. And I think the thing is that we that we put so much focus on our relationships, like we look first to our relationships to heal us, and then we get hurt again, mm. you know. And we you know keep going through that process, and we keep getting hurt again, you know. And a lot of times we wait so long in life before we really start to turn to the Most High and trust that He's the one that wants to heal us, mm -hmm. you know. Because the Most High will also use relationships you know, in that healing process, but first we have to, we have to go to him to get, to get that stability and that healing from him so mm -hmm. that he can lead us through that process. Right. Mm -hmm. so we're just mm -hmm. usually just going blindly <laughs> by our own, our own, you know, discernment, our own, uh, you know, we're pulled to different people for different reasons, usually because of something in us that's, that's still not healed. Mm -hmm. You know, we end up in another relationship that's going to hurt us, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, so we have to we have to allow him to heal us. You know, I think the first thing is is being aware of it, you know, coming to an awareness that that we need to be healed. Mm -hmm. You know, um, a lot, you know, in, in today's, you know, just in recent years, more and more people are, you know, going to counseling and, and therapy and things like that. So it's becoming more popular. Uh -huh. But, you know, for a long time in our community, that's been taboo. So. Right. You know, we don't we've, we've kind of shrugged off a lot of things that we went through in our childhood and in. And, and, you know, possibly not having parents that were present in a loving way, you know, being, mm -hmm. having gone through abuse, having gone through uh, different things just in our upbringing mm -hmm. that we don't realize the impact that it's had on us. Um, so allowing the most high to walk us through that healing process of, of him showing us, you know, this, this is, this is what happened to you. You know, this is the effect that it's having on you and the fruit that you're seeing in your life right now. Mm -hmm. you know and allow me to come in and to help you to heal that you know so it, it really takes that relationship and I, I think because um you know until we until we really grow in our relationship with the most high it, it's more of an intangible thing it's hard to grasp it's hard right. to see it's easier to see people <laughs> yeah and to you know really deal with people but you know once we once we trust you know put that trust there and, and that's the most important thing in our relationship with the most high is is trust Mm -hmm. you know, opening ourselves up to that so that he can come in and, and start to heal us and walk us through, you know, learning to love ourselves because that's one of the next things that we have to do before we can really navigate relationships well is, is to learn to love ourselves. Yes, yes. And and it doesn't mean going to get a pedicure. That may be a component <laughs> of it, but but right. you know, people people post this stuff about loving themselves and they're showing themselves um yeah fleshly indulging in things but that's just not what we need I mean like I said it could be a component of that mm -hmm. but I think loving yourself would be knowing yourself and mm -hmm. knowing what situations are not going to be good for you like I, mm -hmm. I I just turned 50 the other day mm -hmm. and so I could look at myself yeah. now and I could tell you there's some stuff I won't even step foot in now because I'm like I do mm -hmm. not I do not want to put that emotional nonsense on myself right. because I know right. what it does to me. But whereas before, I think I had a cape on and I thought I was going to save people and do this. <laughs> right. But but you know what? Even in that, though, I can look at myself back then and I could call that vanity is what I can mm -hmm. do. You know, mm -hmm. and that's like I said, that's knowing yourself. Knowing, wow, I was vain. Wow, I'm still mm -hmm. vain sometimes. Like if I am helping somebody, 
hey, yeah. what? why am I doing it? Is this because I'm being led by y'all or is it because I'm looking for some recognition myself in some yeah. way, shape or form? But at 50, I know that now. Whereas in my 30s, I'm like, oh, let me help everybody. And right. yeah, uh, let me, I might be that person out there taking pictures of myself with the homeless people. I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't do that today, <laughs> but but right. I mean, it just, it, it's all about looking in the mirror and deciding, hey, you know what? Um, first of all, I need to repent. You know, mm. and in that repentance, I, I just know that Yah is merciful and he will he will hear my my cry and he will mm. help me with what I need. Um, yeah. But I, I just think that, you know, what we call this awakening, um, mm. there's a lot of good music. There's a lot of nice clothes. There's a lot yeah. of, you know, events and there's all these different things, but it still yeah. equates to the same nothing, because if you don't know who you are truly in mm. Yah, then you know you're not gonna you're not gonna go anywhere still you're not gonna yeah go yeah that is so true that is so that's so good because th th part of that self awareness that's that's part of that self awareness of knowing our identity that's that's really the awakening of knowing knowing who Yah is mm -hmm. awakening to who He is you mm -hmm. know and then let, allowing that to reflect who we are you know because mm -hmm. our identity is in Him mm -hmm. you know not not in our culture not in anything in this world but but really realizing our identity in him you know mm -hmm. we can understand our identity in this world but that's something that's 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 temporal <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know but understanding our identity in in who we are in him who did he create us to be you know mm -hmm. being a reflection of his character you know we mm -hmm. take on his name mm -hmm. you know we, we we embrace his name and take on his name mm -hmm. and we you know talk about the name and you know mm -hmm. how to say it how to spell it and mm -hmm. you know different things and mm -hmm. but really taking on his name is really taking on his character you know and, yes. and being able to walk in walk in that that character and that authority you know being a representation of that you mm -hmm. know just like um carrying a family name right you know so we have to be able to um you know really 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 awaken to who he is and allow that to change who we are, you know, and that's, that's really when we're in the process of, of being awake. Right. Right. And you're talking about carrying his name, you know, he talks about uh, those people that are called by his name, you know, and, and a lot of us have changed our names and, and, you know, we have Yah in our name somewhere. Right. And then, and then uh, what I've said before is, um, you know, the word says, don't take his name in vain. And we thought that mm -hmm. that meant, you know, don't say, don't say, oh my God, you know. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> what I took it to mean is um, do not take on his name. Don't make it part of yourself mm -hmm. and then go out there and live in vanity, live a fleshly life because right. you're trying to be an example of him, but you can't be an example of him living in your flesh. So if you're taking his name in vain, that is a mm -hmm. true a uh, penalty worthy of death, you know, so we really need to look at how we are taking his name. Um, yeah. and, and, and you shouldn't be taking his name in vain in any way, shape or form. But we, we know, like I said, there's a whole lot going on in this, this uh, um, community and awakening that we have built here because yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it can be crazy. Um, yeah. Now I'm looking at, um, let's see, what am I looking at now? Oh, you know, you mentioned therapy and I was going to talk about therapy. Now I, myself, I mm -hmm. used to, I used to love therapy, another vanity thing. I'll tell you, I love therapy. You know why? Because <laughs> I would end up being the therapist therapy person. Like I would be the therapist therapist. Like mm -hmm. I would start talking to them about my interesting life. Now I wasn't digging <laughs> deep because I didn't feel those people really worthy of knowing my real dirt. Right. So mm -hmm. I would talk with them about my exciting life and things I plan to do in an entrepreneurship and this and that. And they would just be blown away. And next thing I know, they're laying on the couch talking to me about, <laughs> about their, and I'm telling you, this happened like three separate times, but that's a problem. That's a real problem. First of all, <laughs> I need to be seeking Yah for my therapy. I'm not saying nobody should go to therapy, but I'm saying mm -hmm. for me, I know I need to seek Yah. Um, cause you, you, even if you're going to go talk with somebody, you need to seek you about who you're going to be talking to, you know, yeah. cause you can't be yeah. talking to everybody, but, and then who am I, you know, just all of a sudden just telling these people what to do with their life. I mean, it's just, it's, it's too yeah. much, but like I said, yeah. 50, I'm not doing that stuff no more like that, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I said, what do you feel the expectation is when people check themselves into 
therapy? What are they expecting to get when they do that? Hmm. I mean, I think I think that sometimes um, I don't know. I think I think it's a good thing to figure out what like what your motive is, what your expectation is. I think some people may check in just to like you like you were saying, just just kind of. <laughs> kind of to talk or, or mm-hmm. I think sometimes you, you check into therapy and you think that you're going to come out being right still uh-huh. <laughs> just to kind of confirm what you yes. are mm-hmm. thinking mm-hmm. you know versus um you know really coming in with the vulnerability I think mm-hmm. if you come in with the vulnerability of, of knowing that there's something you know maybe there's something that you are missing you mm-hmm. know there's something that somebody else can help you to see mm-hmm. um you know, coming in with that type of um, openness and vulnerability, you know, I guess it's, it's, the, it's the best way to be able to, to, to get the truth, mm-hmm. you know, because um, one of the ways that we love ourselves is by, by telling ourselves the truth, yes. you know, being open to truth, you know, yes. and having somebody outside of you that can kind of point you in that direction or that can see you, you know, because we don't, the same way we can't see our face, you know, I don't see my face unless I look in the mirror or, mm-hmm. you know, so if I have something on my face, I'm not going to know unless somebody outside of me points it out to me, right. you know, and, you know, so being able to be in a position where somebody who um, has some kind of insight, you know, can see what's on my face that I can't see and point it out to me, you know, mm-hmm. um, I think is a, is a good thing. So, you know, that can happen in therapy, that can happen in healthy relationships, you know, mm-hmm. which is why I think that, you know, healthy relationships are so important you know, it's an important aspect of love, you know, so as as we heal and grow, we can become a community where we can come to each other and be a safe space to be able to see those things, you Mm -hmm. know, and to, and to, you know, know that you're in a safe environment where people aren't trying to take advantage of those things that they're seeing, you know, because a lot of times people will see those things about you and, Mm -hmm. and take advantage of it, you know, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's the, you know, that's what we have experienced a lot being in unhealthy environments and in, in family in our communities. And, you know, so, you know, that's another aspect of love, just being able to, to become healthy enough to be able to be a healing community, you know, where we can, you know, get that truth, you know, because that's right. really the truth. That's another word that we talk about a lot in this awakening is being in the truth, mm-hmm. you know, and being in the truth is not about gaining information but it's about coming into um the really the truth coming into us you mm-hmm. know allowing the spirit of truth to come you know to have its way in our in, in within us and do the work of showing us you know who we are showing us what's what's going on inside of us and bringing the most high's truth into that you know mm-hmm. the most i said i desire truth in the inward part mm-hmm. you know so the spirit of truth will come in and, and reveal those things you know and he'll lead like you said we have to seek yah before we seek out any any type of counseling or talking to other people you know and through his spirit through the spirit of truth the, he'll lead us mm-hmm. you know to you know where where he wants us to be and what he wants to show to us you know yes yes and and the thing is people always they say this thing well yah is trying to see i say he ain't trying to see nothing he already knows <laughs> he right. is he is letting you know what you need to right. know about yourself because he created right. you he knew you he knitted you together in your mother's womb so you think he needs to try to see no he knows so <laughs> it is us that needs to see we need to open yes. our eyes and pray for those scales to fall off <laughs> yes indeed <laughs> so you know i was thinking about this book and i i mean I was like, okay, th- this book is good. I-, I already know this book is just real good. Now we we oftentimes do not take the time out to read like we should. I mean, we don't read our Bible like we should. We don't read other books. We don't read nothing. We we read we we don't read. Sometimes we do. Sometimes we don't. It's a selective right. thing. I'll just I'll I'll talk about right. myself. It's a selective thing. But I'm right. telling you, I sat down to read this book so I could create this these questions for this interview, and I was like, oh no 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 no, this book. I'm going to take some time out. How many pages is it? 228, you said? Uh, I think it's 266. 266. All right. So I started reading just the beginning and I was blown away. Um, Mm. And in that, this book, I would say, is beyond self-help. Like you might go in a bookstore and you might see Dr. Phil or any of these other, quote, gurus. Mm -hmm. But I say that this book is beyond self-help because it is just... It is, it is requiring you to really look at yourself and ask yeah. yourself the hard questions. And yeah. I think oftentimes as a people or just people in general, I think that 
we become afraid of who we are not. Like you mm -hmm. might, you might have said that you are a tremendous singer. And all this time you're telling yourself, yes, I am number one. I'm a great singer. But then when it is revealed to you, like somebody plays that back to you in your ears and you're mm -hmm. like, oh my goodness, I could break glasses with my voice. This is right. terrible. And you right. discover I am not a good singer. Then you are truly like thrown into an identity crisis. And I think we become mm -hmm. afraid of, of, of unknowing or, or knowing who we thought we were is not who mm -hmm. we really are. Mm -hmm. And so I think before we really dive in, we just have to really say, yeah, I trust you, you know, yeah. and help me with my unbelief because you, yeah. you, you are refreshing and renewing me daily as far as who I really am. Like these other things that the world tells me that I am, I am not because I'm only who you have called me to be. Anything else yeah. is false. It's like, right. it's like wearing, um, it's like me putting on my son's shoes. He wears a size 13. So if I was mm. to put his shoes on and try to walk down the stairs, most likely I'm going to fall on my face, right? Mm -hmm. So so that's what we have to equate it to. Like we have been wearing somebody's shoes for a very long time and y'all wants to fit us with the right shoes. I guess like Cinderella. I don't like these fairy tales, <laughs> but that, I'm mean, equated to see. He wants us to have the perfect fit, which is him because right. the world cannot give you that. You know, I, I just thought about this. Like, okay, you know, you go to the store and you buy shoes. Okay, they have standard shoe sizes for everybody. But mm -hmm. you can actually go to a custom shoemaker that will make shoes that only fit you. They fit your mm -hmm. feet. They're your feet shape and all that. But anybody else to put those shoes on, they're not going to fit them just right. But right. you have been going to J.C. Penny getting your shoes. And so there's a lot of different people with the same shoes and the same shoe size you wear. But if you go to this custom person, no, these are the only shoes for you. And Yah wants to fit you with the perfect shoes for you. Right, right. Praise Yah for that. Mm. Praise Yah. Oh, goodness. I, and we spend so much time, be, because of that fear, we spend so much time trying to adjust. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we, we miss out. You know, because eventually, if, if we belong to the Most High, those mm -hmm. of us who belong to the most high, he's going to get you there. <laughs> mm -hmm. yes. You know, we can, we can, it's like, you can do it now or you can do it later, mm -hmm. you know, but you know, we can take the, the 40, 40 years <laughs> wandering mm -hmm. in the wilderness, you know, or we can take the short, you know, the short route, mm -hmm. but the most high is going to get us there, you know? So it's like that, that initial fear of, of that exposure of, you know, this is not who I really am. Mm -hmm. You know, while in the meantime, we're becoming even less of ourselves, you know, mm -hmm. and we're frustrated most of the time because we know that something is off. We know that something, you know, that there's something more. We we, we know it in the back of our, our minds somewhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, we know it in our hearts, but it's like we don't we just don't want to go through that initial discomfort, mm -hmm. you know, of just that exposure. You know, but when we get through that valley, when we can if we can just get through that initial discomfort, you know, it's not as bad as what we think it is, <laughs> you know, yes. so like you, 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 you deal with it, you know, and, and then it, it comes, it brings us to a place of, of comfort. Cause now it's like, okay, I can, I can now finally begin my journey because we're not really beginning our journey until we come into that truth, you know, mm -hmm. until we allow the most high to show us who we really are, mm -hmm. you know, and, and the, you know, the good, the bad and the ugly, <laughs> right. You know, right. then we can, then we can start, you know, because the most high is, is a lot of times we're trying to hear him. We're trying to hear his voice. We're trying to get instruction and direction. And and he's like, I'm I'm sitting at this this last spot that I that I've been trying to show you, you know, and we until we come to that place of authenticity, you know, where we're we're willing to allow him to expose our hearts, and we just end up wandering around, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. And um, and adjusting mm -hmm. in the wilderness and adjusting the things. You, you talked about the shoe example and I mm -hmm. I I wear, I have kind of big feet. I wear size 10 shoes, mm -hmm. but I, I really, um, if you go to the shoe store, the shoe goes from, for some reason, the shoes go from size 10 to 11 and they don't have 10 and a half. Mm -hmm. And when I was younger, I actually wore 10 and a half, but they just never had them at the store. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so I would, um, I just adjusted to wearing a size 10. I probably wear 10 and a quarter, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> So I just kind of adjusted to wearing a size 10 and I've, I've been wearing it, you know, so I don't know if my feet shrunk or oh, what goodness. happened, but wow. I just kind of adjusted to it because, you know, 
you know, whatever I would have had to go through, I guess get custom size or whatever. Uh -huh. You know, I just kind of adjusted. So I think that that's what we kind of end up doing is adjusting to something that's less than what we actually are. And it doesn't fit our life. Mm. Um, it doesn't fit the life that the most high has for us, you know, and, it's, and we never become, we never, man, it's like until we come to who he's called us to be, we're, we're just, we're never, we're never going to find that fulfillment. Yeah, you know, that's, that's never find that fulfillment. True. Well, we definitely want to um, take a commercial break. We are talking to our sister Yara, and her book is called Remnant Love. You're listening to Sister CC. This is CC on air, and this is PQLR1 Radio, where Yah is first. We thank you and join us for uh, the second half. Praise Yah. I'm going to be sharing a message with you called Clean Your Lens. And I will be reading and referencing the King James Version of the Bible. Again, praise Yah. So we all like to take pictures. And before I take a picture or video, I can hear my husband's voice always saying, clean your lens. I used to have a problem with that all the time, cleaning my lens. But cleaning your lens allows the pictures before you to become sharper, more clear, and all the details can be unmistakably seen. Both the darkness and the light is revealed. Oftentimes, we're overtaken by things that have been said or done to us. Being overtaken can truly equate to having a dirty lens. Poor image and perspective of the situation is usually what happens. Instead of sitting with what was said and actually gauging who where or what it came from, we let it ruin our day or worse. We let it take root in our lives, causing us to forget who and whose we are. But the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Whenever things come to make you forget who you are, it is important to remember that by way of the blood of Yahusha, repentance renews you every day. Satan has infiltrated the lives of many, and unfortunately, a great number of people will continue to be used by the dark workings to attempt to kill off what Yah has called you to be. The word says in John 10:10. The thief comes not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. How can you experience life abundantly if you continue to allow darkness to rule over the light that was put inside of you to shine for Yah's glory? Your thoughts are a motivator for the positive or negative fruit in your life. That is why you have to, you must take control over the thoughts as they come into your mind. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 10, 5, casting down imagination and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of Yah and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Yahushua. We must quickly decide to view things not as the world does, but as our Heavenly Father has allowed us to properly see them and put them in their true place and true perspective. Weapons will always form. They do not have to be allowed to prosper. That's on you. But trusting in Yahuwah instead of your own understanding makes all the difference. Let's go back to the word where it says in Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Trusting in Yah with all thine heart and leaning not into thine own understanding in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. The word again in Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper and every tongue that rise against thee in judgment thou shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of Yah and their righteousness is of me, said Yahuwah. So clean your lens. How you see things definitely does matter. Again, praise Yah for the word. And I thank you for listening. 
All right, everyone. Again, this is Sister Cece, and you are listening to Cece on Air on PQLR1 Radio, where Yah is first. We are speaking to our sister, Yara, and she has a new book out called Remnant Love. And before we were talking about shoe sizes. I don't know how we got on <laughs> shoes, but you know, it's however the Holy Spirit guides and leads. That's just where we go. Uh, praise Yah for the Ruach. All right. Uh, <laughs> And since when I was thinking, like you said that you probably fit about a 10 and a half, but then you made yourself fit into a 10. And I'm thinking, wow, that's that's such a great example because what did you do? You shrunk back. Mm -hmm. you <laughs> shrunk back. You didn't say, oh, let me get a size 11. You went backwards. Mm -hmm. You you shrunk back. And right. we know that that is that's spiritual, you know, yeah. to shrink back and we're not supposed to be shrinking back. So we need to really take that example to heart and say, you know what? My father loves me. Yeah. So he wants what is fitting for me. So I don't yeah. want to wear some old shoes that are not going to be right for me. I want to wear the shoes that are exactly catered and detailed and special for me because there is no one like me. He created me individually. I'm fearfully mm -hmm. and wonderfully made, which is what the word says. And yeah. I think that that goes along with um, you talking about us not knowing how to love ourselves. But if we mm -hmm. truly looked at the scripture for what it is, it tells us how to love ourselves and how we should feel about ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's that um, you talked about what I heard was confidence, like, um, when we really can embrace the most high's love, it gives us confidence, mm -hmm. you know, and it, and it causes us to live, you know, to live out loud, to be able to not shrink back and to be able to really fully, fully embrace ourselves in, in, in a secure place. Like I, I, um, I didn't grow up with my father. He mm -hmm. was out of the picture when I was um, very, when I was young. Uh -huh. And I noticed that other women that, that I knew that did grow up with their fathers that they had this level of, of when they grew up with healthy fathers, yeah. they had this level of confidence. Uh -huh. You know, and that's something that I've noticed consistently is that um, a lot of times women who have grew up with their fathers have a just a natural confidence because that's something that um, that a male figure will, will help produce in you. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he it kind of gives you that confidence. And I think it's the same thing um, with the most high. You know, he he's our father. And mm -hmm. when we really can lean on that, you know, lean back on that and really, really stand on that, you know, it gives us a confidence to be able to embrace, embrace the good and the bad about ourselves, embrace the struggles, the weaknesses, mm -hmm. embrace the, you know, embrace, embrace every aspect of ourselves, embrace our, you know, our trials, embrace, mm -hmm. you know, the difficulties that we deal with because we, we're standing on, something that's solid you know mm -hmm. we're standing on we have we have you know this this power behind us you know so we know that we can we can face the different things and and when we don't have that we don't have that we in the back of our minds we're like we're feeling shame you mm -hmm. know we're feeling guilt from things in the past we're feeling unsure you know we're, we're lacking confidence mm -hmm. you know so that's going to affect the way that we handle everything it's going to mm -hmm. cause us to, to accept things that we shouldn't accept from other people, mm -hmm. you know, accept opportunities that are, you know, we're going to accept the thing that we think that we deserve versus mm -hmm. what we've been designed for and what you has called us to, you know, because we can, we have the confidence, we can, we can deal with the consequences of, of, of the weight. <laughs> we can right. deal with, you know, the things that we have to deal with in the waiting period um, until we see the thing that, that we know that Yah has called for us, you know, but when we, when we don't, we're accepting anything because we're in a state of desperation. We're in a state of, you know, unfulfillment, you know, we're, we're just not, not in that place of, of, of healthy confidence and, and security, mm -hmm. you know? So I think that the most high love really gives us the security to be able to, um, you know, just to navigate in the world and gives us that, that ability to love ourselves in a way where we won't just accept anything, mm -hmm. um, you know, yeah, that's true. And you talked about having the love of a father. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I, I had the same situation. My father was, he was not uh, there. Uh, I'll just say it like that. And I think a lot of us have that testimony, both yeah. men and women. And um, something that I have to tell myself and remind myself is that father wasn't there, but the father, my heavenly father, yeah, he's mm -hmm. always been there. Yeah. And so that gives me the confidence to 
push that other um, degrading feeling aside because we do feel a certain yeah. kind of way when we think about our our natural father or our, our physical father, our birth father not being there. Yeah. Uh, that alone can cause a lot of trauma just thinking about it. You know, yeah. like you said, you you know some people who did have their father there and you saw the confidence that they walked in and mm -hmm. they had no problem walking in that confidence. Whereas a girl that didn't have her father, sh should she have the ability to try to walk in a little bit of confidence? People mm -hmm. would tell her, that she is stuck up, snotty. Who does she think mm -hmm. she is? And uh, but but the love of your father embracing you would say, "Oh no, you are all that. You are everything mm -hmm. that you are everything and more that those people are afraid of." You keep mm -hmm. on doing that. But then the other girl that didn't have the father there would cower down and just be complacent and be like everybody else wanted yeah. them to be. You know, and and yeah. I think all, all of these things that we're talking about we deal with but then how about the next generation it transcends over mm -hmm. to the children that you birth you know yeah. they're not able to receive what they need because you never got what you had so you know mm -hmm. it's it's still all about repentance because that stuff that you were walking in if mm -hmm. it's not dealt with you definitely pass it down for many generations because it's a spiritual thing yeah yeah, it is. It's, it's definitely, it's definitely a spiritual thing, and it'll, it'll keep, it'll keep going. You know, even you know, from generation to our own children, or even to just as, as a generation of people. Yes. You know, just, just in general. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's so important to be able to, to get that, to get that, to get that reversed. You know, to really, really break that stronghold and, and that's in our minds. You know, because it's, it's something that's in our mind and that's in our heart. You know, to really up, uproot that seed. You know, and allow the most high to, to really root us and, and establish us, you know, within himself. Yes, absolutely. You know? And and, the and most from, go ahead. I was gonna say and coming from an authentic place, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because a lot of times we we have this fake confidence. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You yes. know, we have this confidence, you know, uh. but but when the most high when the most high is able to put it in us, we can still we can walk in humility, you know, and confidence. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't have to we don't have to have a fake um we don't have to project project confidence <laughs> we just we, have to yeah, yeah walk in you know walk in security mm -hmm. you know in 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 a humble way because a lot of times we we use pride as a way to be confident <laughs> yeah we don't have to fake it till we make it uh because yeah. with with yeah we we've made it you know because we're walking in what he's given us versus what the yeah. world gives us um yeah. and i i was thinking about um you know, just healthy relationships in general, you know, because as a people, we definitely need that, but we struggle so much. And I think we struggle so much because like we've been talking about, we don't, we don't know love. We, mm -hmm. we haven't loved ourselves and we haven't fully extended ourselves as, as to open so that we could experience the father's love. Mm -hmm. um, but, but what we do, what we're supposed to do, we can look at James five sixteen. It tells us to confess our faults one to another and pray for one another that ye may be healed. The effectual mm -hmm. fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. But if you don't have the trust of anyone around you, like who are you going to confess your faults to, you know, because we need to be a healed people so that we can help heal each other, you know? Yeah. yeah. So sad. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah. And I think that's one of the, one of the, one of the things that, that hinders us from healing because the most high, the most high doesn't just love us from the sky. <laughs> you know, he doesn't oh, just love us from within, thank goodness. you know, he loves us, <laughs> 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 you know, cause I mean, we go to the most high, but a lot of times he puts people in our life, you mm -hmm. know, to be mm -hmm. able to, to love us, you mm -hmm. know, like that's, that's what we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be vessels of his love, mm -hmm. you know? Um, yes, he, he will, he will do it in the absence of people. You know, he's mm -hmm. really capable of, yes. of dealing with us when it's just us. Mm -hmm. You know, but he also is also effective when he can deal with us and show us love, you know, through people. And that, that's part of, um, you know, my healing process has been, you know, the most high leading me to people who have been able to contribute to that, you know, mm -hmm. just a little bit, a little bit here, a little bit there. Right. You know, something that that showed me that, you know, it's, it's OK, mm -hmm. <laughs> that I'm OK. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, I think that's that's what the call the call to love. You know, the most high wants to restore us so that we can be. He said that he, he want, we're supposed to be lights in the earth. Yes. You know, we're supposed to be a light. 
Mm-hmm. You know, we're supposed to be able to show and reflect his love to people, you know, to, to be his hands and his feet. We're supposed to be the hands and the feet of Messiah on the earth right. to be able to, you know, touch people and, and to give that touch to people to let people know what his love looks like, mm-hmm. you know, because we're still, we're trying to figure it out, you know, but it's easier to figure out when we can see it physically, mm-hmm. you know, that was the original design. We were supposed to come up in families that showed us love. And, yes. And, you know, that was supposed to be part of our, our um, you know, development, but because we, we are in this, this chaotic environment where we're all just dealing with different layers of brokenness and, and not um, misunderstanding and, you know, just different traumas, you know, we, we, we're, we're just all trying to, to get it together. So like you said, we, we are, we have triggers, you know, we, we come to community and we just, you know, we're easily triggered mm-hmm. because of all of our different wounds. So, mm-hmm. you know, having to, you know, trust Yah to heal us of those, those things that are triggering us mm-hmm. long enough to be able to endure mm-hmm. <laughs> in a relationship mm-hmm. with somebody, mm-hmm. you know, um, when we see, you know, Yes, we should run from certain things. Right. <laughs> you know, certain things are red flags or, yes, or toxic yes. that we should run from. Yes. But other things we have to endure with, you know, each other's weaknesses. The scripture says to endure with one another in our weakness, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, but it takes a, a level of stability within ourselves to, to, to be able to do that, you know. So, you know, as we heal, you know, we gain a little bit more of that, you know, and as we're dealing with somebody else that's healing, you know, we can give them, extend them grace, you mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, as we do that together, you know, and allow them, like you said, confess our sins to one another, you know, mm-hmm. and allowing the most high to be in the midst. And I think that the most high being in our midst is what allows us to do that. Mm-hmm. You know, him being constantly, you know, um, leaning not to our own understanding, you know, but in all, all our ways, acknowledging him so that he mm-hmm. can direct our paths, you mm-hmm. know, in the midst of that constantly bringing in, in, in prayer. Like we talk about prayer, like it's just a thing to do, but not, like, no, Ooh. we bring the most high into the atmosphere, into the situation and, 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 and humble ourselves, yes. you know, and call on his wisdom and ask for his direction. Like he will give it to us, you know, yes. he'll show us how to navigate, you know, and, and it's just having that humility. The most high works, he gives his grace to the humble. You know, when we humble ourselves, he really is able to change us and to move in our midst, you know, so it's, it's really a, a thing of submission and humility you know, to be able to allow him to put us in, in uh, relationships and for us to, you know, allow the messy process of that, yes. you know, unfolding, you know, cause it can get messy. Yes. <laughs> it's yes. It's not a, you know, it's not going to be without issues, without problems, but, you know, it's just allowing ourselves to endure that process, yes. you know, and trust and trust in him in it, you know? Yes. 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 Um, it's crazy. I mean, I guess I should probably some stuff we should keep to ourselves and then some stuff, I mean, like, you know, no, we need to talk because people can, can identify, but like, as you were talking and you said the messy process, I just immediately, for some reason, thought of that show from back in the day called double dare. Do you remember that show double dare? Mm -hmm. (laughs) It just reminded me of that. It's like, okay, you're going to be talking, you answer questions and you're, you're in a relationship with the person next to you, but you might get messy. You mm-hmm. might get messy because it's a physical challenge. I mean, really, it's a spiritual challenge. You're going to get messy mm-hmm. in this thing and you have to be ready for it. And yeah. again, you have to trust Yah because he is in the midst of it all. Like mm-hmm. we have to be up for the physical and spiritual challenge because I know me, I'm a, I will jump the ship in a second. Like if it's <laughs> not right, I'm out. I'm done. Right. I don't care right. who you are. I will cut you off. Will not talk to you again and feel good about it. Like yeah. justified. Yeah. But yeah. like you were saying, some people in situations, yes, they are wicked. It's unrighteousness. It's all kind of stuff. But as we are building amongst, you know, uh, our our people, you know, we're we're walking this walk, and you know, we're we're wearing our fringes, and we're wrapping our heads, and we're doing. We should be able to be, you know, trusting y'all to build some righteous relationships. Now, it doesn't mean we're gonna have like a a million people in a congregation. I mean, but maybe it will. But Mm -hmm. again, that's the direction of Yah, you know, and and the word says that, you know, if, if we want friends, we have to make ourselves friendly. Some of us walk around with judgment ready to go. It's like, oh, I see that they're (laughs) doing this like this. Oh my goodness. You know, instead of saying, let me just let it all go and meet this sister, meet this brother, you know, um, I'm looking to 
not be an authority over their lives to where I'm trying to check all these boxes concerning what they are and what they're not. I mean, what if they did that to me? We wouldn't be anywhere. Let me just, let me just, yeah. let me just have somebody that, 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 uh, you know, says they're following. Yeah. And, and yeah. we can read some scripture together, but, but that, that friendship can build, you know, if, if y'all, y'all wills that to be done, but like we we're, we're ready to just cut everybody off. Like, oh no, yeah. no, no, they they got they only got three fringes and they should have four. Or, <laughs> or, or her her head is not all the way covered. And oh my gosh, she has on lip gloss, you know. So yeah. we we need to we need to do better about seeking y'all about our heart, our heart mm -hmm. and our motive, which you know the world talks about Valentine's Day and all that nonsense, but we know mm -hmm. our our heart needs a check daily, mm -hmm. sometimes minute by minute concerning whatever it is that we we wish to be, or not, not wish, but we want to be involved in. So we mm -hmm. truly need to be seeking the Father about our steps in, in this time, um, because as we desire to be changed, I believe that he will do that, should we really be willing to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I want to look at, I want to look at the book here. And so in the table of contents, um, you have why you wrote the book, and then mm -hmm. you have a note about the names used. And then in the introduction, it says, can you feel it, baby? It's cold outside, darkness masquerading as light, moving from night vision to sight. The remnant must endure the four flows of love. And then we get into uh, flow one. It's receiving Yah's love, perceiving Yah's love, 11 characteristics, uh, barriers to receiving and believing Yah's love your personal struggle with these barriers and then flow two, responding to Yah's love, loving Yah looks like, and then flow three, guarding Yah's love within, loving myself looks like, and then preparing to go outside and it says keep warm. And then we got flow four, extending Yah's love, the covenant of love, how love moves, challenges of love, and the conclusion and that is a lot because then the next page we have why you wrote the book and you're talking about 2017 and how you felt like you lost everything. And, you know, I was just, I was looking at 2018, which is when the whole COVID stuff started or whatever. And it seems like yesterday, but that was literally like six years ago. I mean, that was, mm -hmm. uh, it, it was almost 10 years ago. And so mm -hmm. even looking at this 2017, when everything was going on, does it feel like yesterday for you that all this stuff was happening? Yeah, <laughs> it does. It feels like, well, in one sense, it feels like it was so long ago because so much has happened since then, uh -huh. you know, but but it was such a significant time, you know, there was so many things going on mm -hmm. um, during that time, mm -hmm. um, you know, and it was the time period where I just was losing, losing so many things that, yeah. that had me pondering, you know, pondering about love, mm -hmm. you know, and it's the time period when the most I kind of had me to start, um, you know, to start writing some of those things down mm -hmm. um, as I was going through that process, you know, and it's, I've been, you know, kind of working on it here and there since then. Mm -hmm. um, but like you said, when the, when the pan pandemic hit, um, just like in 2020, um, the world changed so drastically, <laughs> so quickly, mm -hmm. you know, it, and it just became even more urgent that we, you know, as a people that we get this, get this love thing together, you know, mm -hmm. to really work on our love, our love walk. Um, you know, because we're we're in um we're in covenant with each other. And I think that we don't look at it like that sometimes. Um, you know, we know that a marriage is a covenant, mm -hmm. you know, with as far as um husband and wife, you know, that's a covenant and we understand the seriousness of it. But when we come to the most high, we're in covenant with him and we are brothers and sisters <laughs> within that covenant. Mm -hmm. You know, so it it it's it's not an optional thing for us to walk in love, you know. Mm -hmm. So like right. you were saying, like like you were talking about, the, um, you know, how sometimes we can wear it as a badge of honor that we we're quick to cut somebody off and right. <laughs> move on and judge people. Like the Most High is like this is the most in, important thing to him, you know, that we learn how to operate, um, how how to operate together because we're going to be this is who we're going to be with. <laughs> yes, this is where we kingdom, are. This is know? where we are absolutely. And you know, it's yeah. funny because you, yeah, the pandemic was twenty twenty. Why am I thinking twenty eighteen? Well, I think yeah. that's where my, my pandemic started in 2018 because I had some stuff going on myself. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah. yeah, that's how traumatized I've been. I I yeah. have blurred I've blurred the lines of PTSD. Okay. But okay, yes, absolutely. 
Well, I mean, as you see your growth from that time to now, mm -hmm. this book has truly come forth to teach others. But for those that are listening right now, what is the most immediate thing that you feel should be known? Mm -hmm. Well, two things I, I was, when you just was, was saying that, I was thinking, it made me think about the question of what is the, um, what has it taught me uh -huh. <laughs> in the process? Uh -huh. And the, one of the most, one of the most um, important things that, that it taught me and kind of slowed me down in writing the book. Like I, I kind of got stuck in writing it. When I first started writing the book, I was focused on the last section that was dealing with relationships with each other. And I guess uh -huh. where my mind and my heart was. You know, um, but the most high is the one who rearranged and put my focus on establishing the foundation in, in him, mm -hmm. you know, and as I was going through that process, you know, I, I was going through, I started going through, I was, I was writing this book most of 2023 and I was going through my own personal crisis with the most high mm -hmm. in that because mm -hmm. as I was writing, like he was showing me how much I still struggled with, you know, like I, I there's a section that you read that said, um, my struggles with the different barriers to receiving y'all's love. And he was just showing me how much I still needed to get past some of those barriers, mm. you know, and how I really was still in a struggle and in, in a fight with really um, receiving his love because of certain things that I'd gone through in my life, certain circumstances that were coming up that I, I, I kept coming back to questioning, you know, that, and I, I wasn't consciously aware of it, you know, but as I was having to write this, <laughs> <laughs> he kind of was like, um, you need to really examine this. Like, you really, you really got to get past this hurdle, you know? Mm -hmm. And it was mm -hmm. one of those moments, like you talked about earlier, like like really having to expose ourselves and, and to face what's going on inside of us um, so that we can grow, you know? So the most I kind of forced me to, you know, to wrestle through that and really, you know, come face to face with how I felt about him, mm -hmm. you know, how I felt about, you know, where my faith was and, and how, you know, why I was having such a hard time and what things in my mind that I needed to repent and, and be renewed in the way that I saw him, you know? So that was like one of the most significant things for me as I was writing the book of really wrestling through um, and coming to grips with, you know, what his love looks like and, and, and have I really received it? Am I, am I continuing to believe it? You know, cause it's a process. We have to continue to uh, renew that in us as we're going through disappointments, as we're going through, you know, trials, you know, sometimes it, it challenges, it challenges that the idea, does y'all really love me? Mm. You know, so I had to, I really had to examine that for myself um, as I was writing the book, you know, so I think that that's one of, that's something that, you know, other people may struggle with and may deal with also, you know, because until we get past that, we're going to, we're going to have a hard time um, with the other, with the other aspects, even, even though we try our best, you know, I think we, um, we think that we're flowing in love, you mm. know, but we're stuck somewhere, you know, mm -hmm. we're stuck somewhere in the process. So just like a flow of water, you know, going through a pipe or something and it has, it has something stuck in the pipe. The water's mm -hmm. not going to, you'll still get a trickle, <laughs> but something is a blockage there. Right. You know, so I think that one of the things in the book is, is like, um, it'll help you kind of figure out where your blockage is. And, um, the four flows are, are, uh, receiving y'all's love, which is the first one. Mm -hmm. And it goes into responding to y'all's love. How how do we love y'all back? Mm. You know, um, how do we, once we receive his love, you know, um, like we talked about in the beginning, we see love as being something that's just emotional, mm -hmm. you know, so we just love y'all emotionally sometimes. <laughs> just like we just, uh, I love y'all, you know, and I sing and I cry, you know, and that's right. the extent of it, oh. you know, but the most high, there's a lot more to, you know, what he, what he expects, mm -hmm. you know, so that's kind of, um, what the second flow deals with. And then we go into um, the third flow is, is loving ourselves and, and being able to do that in a healthy way mm -hmm. and learning what that means a as covenant believers, you know, what does that look like? You know, because we know that Messiah said that we are to die to ourselves, mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, so how do you reconcile dying to yourself with loving yourself, mm. you know? So we kind of dig into that topic. And then once we've established that foundation, now we can look at, once I have this, I, I like, I look at it as being establishing your home, mm -hmm. you know, establishing our love with the most high is in, in, in within ourselves is like creating a safe home, a safe space, a home that, that, that we can, you know, um, always run to always have stability. Mm -hmm. You know, once we do that, now we can navigate 
in our relationships with, with other people and they may, you know, people may fail us. People may, you know, relationships may go one way or another, but we, we are established in our home. Mm-hmm. You know, we're established in our love. Mm-hmm. So we can navigate and, and, and not wreck our world. <laughs> right. Right. You know, we can love, you know, we have love to pull out to somebody that's coming from a healthy stream and not from polluted water. You know, mm-hmm. it's not coming from our trauma you know so you know so i think that you know it's kind of like just just walking through that process of of examining all those different things so that we can so that we can flow in yah's love um and just renew our minds from what we've learned about love in this world yes yes and i like what you're talking about establishing that love with yah because the bible tells us a wise man builds his house upon a rock and rock the rock is yah you know, mm-hmm. I mean, it don't get no, no, no stronger than that rock right there, right. you know? So if we have, a, we've established that rock in him as our foundation, we mm-hmm. will not be moved, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and so in that, no matter who comes, no matter who goes, we know that the love of the father is there for us to nurture us back to health for whatever, you know, concerning whatever has gone on. Yeah. Um, but like I said before, we tend to treat him as if he is like my mom would say, your little friend down the street. You know, Yah is right. not your little friend down the street. Right. <laughs> he is Yah and he mm-hmm. wants to be able to, well, no, he is doing, he's doing what he's going to do in our lives. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, he gives us, he gives us these choices and yet uh, we make bad choices and he still wrangles us back in. And that's yeah. a, a track record that we've had, you know, with him. He 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 knows that we have been filthy, but he still brings us back in, you know. But at, at some point in time, we got to decide to grow up and mm-hmm. do what is right. Um, how can we be established in the in the kingdom as anything elder or anything wise or anything knowledgeable? If we can't even get this right, we can't even mm-hmm. we can't even see that the Father has loved us. From day one, you know, yeah, it's definitely, just, yeah, it's it's definitely something that we um we got to stay focused on. And I'm telling you, I believe, sis, that this book is going to help a lot of people. And I'm a lot of people, okay, because <laughs> um I'm definitely going to dive right into it because um you know some of us are still in that place where we don't want to go to therapy we don't want to go to counseling and we don't want to share but i think mm-hmm. as the father has inspired you to write this book it's going to help people open up to where uh, those safe places are to open up Mo- moreover of course him open up to him because he knows our heart he knows what we've been through and so we need to establish that love with him so that we can then love ourselves and then extend ourselves out to our family and those friends that we will have soon. Um, yes. So I'm I'm just so grateful for um, the opportunity that you've given me to talk with you about this book. Now, do you have other writings that people can get uh, get a hold of? Um, this is this is the first um, full book. I have okay. some um, planners that I have available on my um, websites. I do um, I do I make different. Um, inspirational hebraic um home decor jewelry okay. educational items um, okay. on my website is at six days creations.com okay um so i do have planners there but this is my first first book i have several others that i'm working on that yeah i'm willing that they'll be out a little later this year mm-hmm. um so i'm working on some more so i'm i'm and got them in queue <laughs> okay now if others are uh, listening to this podcast and they want to maybe have consultation with you on how to put their book together. Do you have that available? Sure, definitely. I, um, if you go to rootedandrisen.org, um, mm-hmm. you can contact me there. Okay. Um, rooted, rootedandrisen.org. Um, and you can find out about, um, you can connect to the book there. You can connect to um, Six Days Creations and you can contact me from there um, for any other coaching or consultation. Mm-hmm. Well, praise y'all for that because, you know, we got to be willing to help each other get this word out and share, share, share. I'm looking for the 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 book club, the book read where we all get the book and we just read it uh, yes. once, once, a, once a week or however you want to do it. I'm looking for it yes. because that keeps us accountable and it makes sure that we do get the book read and then we can 
pass it along and share it with other brothers and sisters if we do that. So that's good. Um, yes. But sis, do you have any, any last words for the brothers and sisters listening? I was going to say, I do, there is a, um, I do have a, um, a group for the book. If anyone is, um, purchases the book, um, you'll oh. see, you'll find it on the, on the website. When you purchase the book, um, we okay. can join the, the book club. There's also another sister that's doing a book club. I'll have that information. Um, um, if anybody reaches out, it's another sister that's going to be doing a book club, um, surrounding the book okay. on, um, every other Thursday night. So okay. I have that information available, but we, we are definitely interested in that. And we want to make sure that everyone uh, reaches out and gets that book and you can go to remnant love uh, no remnant love uh, mm -hmm. and she also said rooted and risen dot org okay let's see and then you can hashtag let's say you read the book and you want to share it on social media she's got a hashtag remnant love book so we got to make sure that we share uh, these things for our brothers and sisters because we all need a bit of uh, therapy from the father <laughs> so I, I think that this is good so sis thank you so much for coming on pqlr1 radio where yah is first we welcome you back at any time um to so share share whatever you have with us okay i appreciate it thank you so much for having me i enjoyed this conversation yes yes uh, we look forward to many more conversations with you in the yes. future but what we need to do right now is we need to make sure that we read our outro scripture scripture um let's see uh hold on i know people are like oh you should know this by heart by now but yeah i do but guess what when i stumble y'all be like she didn't know it by heart so philippians 4 8 and it's the king james version finally brethren whatsoever things are true whatsoever things are honest whatsoever things are just whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things are of good report if there be any virtue and if there be any praise think on these things i'm your sister cc Thank you so much, everyone, and we hope to hear from you soon.